Okay, hey, what's up, everyone? We're glad to have you join us for Questioning Christianity. And this is going to be our fourth episode. And uh, I'm joined today by Kim Shaw, my wife. And <laughs> for those of you who don't know, and we're going to, we have a couple more questions that came via email. And so she's going to, we're sort of going to, we're sort of going to team up on this one and she's going to fire away. Okay, so first question. People mention the gospel a lot around here. What does that actually mean? The term gospel? Yes. The word gospel comes from our, our Greek word, eongelion. And it's just, it's real simple. It simply just means good news. It's the good news. The, the, and, and about the saving death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's, uh, that the gospel is an announcement. It's an announcement of a reality of something that's been accomplished, something that's been won for us. It's not a set of instructions or a list of to-dos on how we can achieve salvation. It's an announcement of something that's been done. An event has occurred. A new reality has been birthed. That is what the gospel is. And so the, it, mean, it means the good news of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ for us and for our salvation. And when we say preach the gospel, you're applying that event. You're preaching, preaching that event. Now, don't get confused because I've had people get confused on this one where we know that they, we say that there's four Gospels, right? I was just going to bring that up. Yeah. Okay. Why? We say Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mm -hmm. the, the They never called themselves the Gospels. As a matter of fact, it doesn't say at the beginning of their account, the 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 gospel according to Mark, the gospel, that's not in the original writings, the gospel according to John. Those are later, later ascribed to them. But... We called them gospels, later generations did, because they were the accounts of the story of how we got the gospel, which there's not four gospels. There's how many in reality? Well, I would think. There's just one. Yeah. The gospel the whole, message of Jesus yeah. Christ. There's just one. There's four accounts of his life. But it's interesting. Right. But this is important because I, I did have a lady when I first started attending Emmanuel. And... Uh, she said she she didn't like my preaching. She says because uh, I don't preach the gospel every Sunday, every particular Sunday. She's like you do it sometimes, but not every every single time. And I was like, whoa, what? Like that's a pretty that's a pretty big accusation to level against a preacher who is trying to be faithful to the Lord. It's like, hey, you don't preach the gospel. And I was like, I announce what God has done in Jesus Christ almost verbatim. I try to every Sunday for us. And she goes, no, 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 no from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Because that's typically how Catholic mm -hmm. preachers or Lutheran preachers, they rarely they rarely divert in their preaching outside of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No, those are, gosp those are accounts of how we got our gospel story. But the actual gospel message is something that is that story and what Jesus Christ has won for us, the good news, and how, how it is applied. So be careful with that. And that's why I like to say that... Uh, when we use the term the gospel, we're talking about the one message, if that if that makes sense. Does that make sense to you? It does. Okay. Yeah. Great. A great little essay to read. Uh, I have it right up there. Martin Luther in, in Timothy Lowell's volume is Basic Theological Writings. He had a, it, it, go ahead and read it. It doesn't take you long. It's called A Brief Instruction on What to Look for and Expect in the Gospels. And that's where he makes that distinction because he's talking about the Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. Mm -hmm. And he's basically saying there's not four, there's one. You always have to remember there's not four, there's one gospel. Gospel, gospel message. Okay. Okay. Our dog's snoring. Yeah. Can anyone hear that? Let's be quiet and see if someone can hear. That was just a little like. <laughs> I had your stomach girl. <laughs> I haven't eaten. Well, now he no, quieted now down. Quiet. Now when I want to yeah. talk, it'll kick back up again. So I'll, I'll be quiet when it starts. Again. Okay. okay. La la last one. When people cross themselves at the end of the service, they seem like it means something important. What does it mean, or is it a Catholic-type thing that they just do? Well, you were raised Catholic. Would you consider right. it a Catholic-type thing? I mean, I, I rarely see people outside of, like, Anglican churches, Episcopalian churches, Lutheran churches, Catholic churches. I rarely, rarely see people do it. What I, would you say? I always thought that it was a Catholic thing, but... I know it's not. It's not a Catholic thing. Uh, I think it's a good Christian thing. It's not from the Bible. It's like, you better do this when you pray. You better make the sign of the cross. <laughs> or else it doesn't count. God's not going to hear you and you're going to get cursed. Now, that's not what... It's a man-made tradition. And and 
that's fine if it's a man-made tradition if it if it reinforces deep deep faith practices into our heart then by all means it's a great thing but just remember that it doesn't it's not a scriptural command make the sign of the cross before and after otherwise it doesn't count that's silly it's just pure silliness so then why do we do it luther said there's a couple reasons one of his favorite was that it's a reminder of the words that were spoken to you at your baptism. So some of you have been to church when when there's a baptism at our church or like when I've done a baptism, right? I did it. You were there for at least three of them because mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, our three boys. And what are the words? What does it say? You, you're called by name. So you'd say like Luke, Daniel, Shaw, what? I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father once and, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so that that repeating name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is a reminder of your baptism. It's a reminder that when that, when, I don't want to get into the theology of baptism, we could do that another time, but when God claimed you, when he made you his own through the waters of baptism, where he drowned that old self, where he killed that old Adam or that old Eve and raised up a new creation. Romans, in, the, in Romans 5, um, Paul talks about baptism and, and Romans 6, he talks about baptism where we be, we've been buried with Christ in baptism. So it's a reminder of that claiming that, in, that where God made us his own, where he, when he gave us a new name in, in the waters of baptism. And Luther used to do it every morning when he'd wake up, he'd splash water in his face and say, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now that's not making the sign of the cross, but it's the s- same concept that he's reminding himself every day of who he belongs to. And that's what I love about baptism is because you get a new name and, you, and it's God who does the naming. So you remind yourself every day is like, okay, I'm going to start this day and remind myself who I belong to, that I don't belong to this career. I don't belong just to this relationship. I don't belong to this world. I don't belong. Whatever it is that's, you know, trying to pigeonhole you, that got that, the man upstairs. And because of the death of his son, Jesus Christ, and his resurrection, he's the only one that gets to name me. And that making the sign of the cross is a reminder of who you really are. There's a great book by William Williman on baptism. Matter of fact, I have it. Hold on. <laughs> right here. And it's called Remember Who You Are. It's a great book on baptism. And that's what it's a reminder of. Um, and then secondly, it's a reminder of who God is. Because that's because that's the name of God. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we know that through what Jesus Christ has done through the gospel. That he's revealed himself in a triune way. It's a reminder that God is Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That Jesus Christ is the second person of the Trinity, right? That, that he is one with the Father and the Holy Spirit. They are three in one. So it's a it's a theological Trinitarian reminder of who God is. And who, it, it's not only a naming of you, as I mentioned in the first point, it's also naming of him. It's his name that he's, re, that he's revealed to us. And I would recommend that any Christian that likes to be reminded of those two things, make the sign of the cross. I do it. I don't, I don't have a knee-jerk anti-Catholicism like a lot of Lutherans or a lot of Protestants do, where it's like, oh, we can't do that because that's Catholic. You know, and the Catholics do that too. Oh, we can't do that because it's like Protestant or whatever. It's like, you know, the older I get, I don't know how you feel, but the older I get and the, the longer I walk with the Lord, I'm, I'm much less parochial and denominational about those things. I just, I don't care. As a matter of fact, the people that do care about that and get worked up about that, um, I, I, that's not a good, that's not a good thing spiritually. It really isn't. You didn't make the sign of the cross. So what? Shut up. Or, you know, like, or why do you do it? I think it's a good question. Why do you do it? And those are the, those are the two basic ones, reasons for me. What did you want to add any? I think you should. Well, I actually have a question. So when you see Catholics doing this, same, same thing, you think of him, he's on your lips and he's in your heart. Yeah. I think that's good too. They only do that right before the reading of the gospel. If you go, if you're going yeah. by the lectionary text, you'd, you'd say like, uh, you remember back in the day for those of you raised Lutheran or Catholic or uh, Episcopalian, or even if you are right now, it's fine. It's a, it's a, I think it's a, it's another man-made tradition. It's mm-hmm. man-made, but if it serves to reinforce the things I was just talking about, mm-hmm. that he's in my, he's in my head, he's on my mouth, he's in my heart. If that helps to remind it, as long as it's not just a, oh yeah, I got to do this thing, mm-hmm. then don't do it. But if it's, a reminder to yourself. It's like preaching to yourself, then do it. It's a reminder of good, godly, biblical truth. Then absolutely do it. I would, I would say, what do you, No, I agree. I mean, I, I've always done it and I hate to say that it's out of just being raised that way, but 
I do when I do it. I, I have him on my mind and I'm and I recognize that I am his. I belong to him. There's nothing wrong with doing something because you were raised that way either. Right. That's kind of the whole hope with how we parent. Right. <laughs> right? Right. I mean, I hope I hope they <laughs> do things because they're raised that way. That's the hope. And that it doesn't always work out that way. But those are, those are the two things. There's other things in in um, in a church service, like you might see mostly probably from more liturgical minded churches. That is, they follow a pretty uh, set concept of the liturgy where you would see maybe a certain time to genuflect or a certain time to kneel, mm-hmm. uh, all those things. Uh, I'll give you a good Protestant version of it, a modern day Christian one, which is not modern day Christianity. This goes all the way back to the Bible, but you won't see this in a Lutheran or a Catholic church, but you will see it more in like a, let's say, a, oh, non-denominational church or a Pentecostal church. You'll see people when they're singing, what will they do? They'll, I was just going to bring... Their, they'll raise their hands. And yeah. what, is, what is that? It's like not saying like touchdown. Right. <laughs> Although there's one Catholic Catholic uh, thing that has this, and it's it's at Notre Dame. It's touchdown Jesus, and that's <laughs> I guess for another one where he's right behind the football stadium. There's a statue on a building, and it's elevated right in the end zone above the football stadium, where a hundred thousand people watch football games. And Jesus is doing this, and they call him touchdown Jesus, which that's my kind of Jesus. That's that, right. That, you know, loves football. You know, it's interesting. Um, when I was in South Africa. And we actually worshipped in a classroom, and um, the it was mainly women that were there. But it was so beautiful because when we were singing um, in Christ Alone with just a guitar, hmm. they their voices were so beautiful. But they were raising their hands in the air. It's the same and, type of thing as this, though, Kimmy. It's like yeah. this is just saying like I'm lifting my praises up to you. That's what it's saying. Yeah, you know, I, but but what's interesting is... But don't feel like you have to do it or you're no. not, like, praising properly. Again, it's the same thing. If this is, I have to do it or the Lord's not here, don't do it. But if mm-hmm. it, if you if you feel like you want to praise God, absolutely, absolutely right. do it. And I think it's, we're a little bit too shy with stuff like that. I think so. At, at our church, we're a little bit mm-hmm. too shy. And I'll tell you something that's helped me with it, because I was raised Lutheran, you're raised Catholic, I mean... You don't do that. No, so it was interesting when I was there. Oh, I sorry. really I did either. feel no, it's fine. Right. I really did feel the Holy Spirit's presence and I wanted to so badly raise my hands with them. But Or like cry at church. You're like, I can't right. cry at church, I think, you know. Right. Like, but it was like I was just scared, like that's not what I've ever done. Which is I'll give you one tip which has helped me, because I'm conscious of people looking yeah. at me and stuff like that, which is like Hey, there's a story about King David when he brought the ark back to Jerusalem. And you remember what he did in front of the ark as it was brought back into Jerusalem? He danced. Naked. Yeah. I would say <laughs> he didn't just get in front like, uh, you know, do the right. do the Macarena or something like that. Like he he got he naked and that around. and that. Yeah. And that that meant like he was the way he was clothed was indicative of like how when he's worshiping the Lord, he's not very self-aware, which is a great place to be. If you're walking with the Lord and you're praising the Lord. Don't be so self-aware. That's not a good place to be in when you're praising. And so what what's worked for me is I just close my eyes, and I, I and I could just then it then it then I just go because I don't even think about it. And it's it's about he and I. It's about us and him, mm-hmm. right? A collective voice that we praise and sing praises to him. And so, yeah, lift up your hands. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that should wrap us up here. Especially because um, our children. our kids just burst into the building and they're mm-hmm. going to get loud and start to wreck everything yes. and so anyway so uh would you pray for us sure. as we sign off here so i hope those two questions helped <laughs> and um it was just about to happen but luke saved the day i hope that i hope those two questions helped and um may god bless you so would you pray for us yes father we are so grateful and thankful that, thankful that we belong to you and that when we do the sign of the cross we can be reminded that it is in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, that's important, you know, because that's our only access to him. So does that make sense? Yes. Maybe that's another question. Do you have to pray in Jesus' name? And I would say, well, no, but technically no, but like you really should, right? Um, what? Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not. Oh, okay. Okay. Am I going to get in trouble when I turn this off?
No. Okay, God bless you. Hey, everyone. I'm here with Alex Stewart. Mm. She is going to be baptized this Sunday. So we want to invite you all. It'll be after our 9 a.m. service, and we'll come on into our sand center, and we'll make sure that we socially distance and wear a mask. But we would love for you all to join in this awesome event. Right, yeah. Alex? Yeah. Okay, can you say see you Sunday? See you Sunday.